Hello, I'm Charles Arthur. I'm the technology editor at The Guardian, and I'm here to talk to you about BlackBerry's new BB10 software and its Z10 handset. Here's an example of the smartphones that are in the market today. We've got the old BlackBerry, we've got Apple's iPhone 5, we've got Samsung's Galaxy S3, the top end of the range. And into this fits the new Z10. To activate the handset, you don't unlock it with the keyboard, you swipe it. Everything that you do is driven by swipes. So rather than having a physical home button, there's no button here at all. What you do is you reach what's the home page, in effect, by swiping up from the bottom. And this shows you the active applications. And if you swipe down from the top, you get another menu, rather like the notifications in Android or in Apple's iOS. Uh, this one offers you settings, the rotation lock, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, alarm, not quite so like uh, Apple's iOS where you would get uh, details of emails or tweets or Facebook updates in that notification center. The home screen is where you get all the active applications. For example, if I open an app such as the BlackBerry World App Store, that comes up in the screen, you can, you can either go back to the home screen or you can zero in on it. It's got a virtual back button which will take you back through, back to the App Store if you happen to be on something. Uh, it's, sometimes it's easy to, to miss and to be swiping from the bottom and going back to the home screen rather than just scro scrolling up the page. But it's got a big selection of films, a big selection of apps. Although the quality is untested so far, quite a lot of them didn't have reviews on when I looked at them. There's uh, Facebook and Twitter are built in. The Twitter app I didn't find that useful. It's a bit strange because uh, it will give you uh, lots of the normal timeline and so on, but it's rather built on Twitter's own app and uh, things like your direct messages don't appear anywhere in this app. You have actually to go to another part of the BB10 software called the, uh, the People Hub in order to find it. Another key element to the way that this works is that if this is your home page, you then have what BlackBerry calls the People Hub. And this sits over here and will give you the whole range of products such as your notifications, BBM, which of course is a big selling point for BlackBerry, text messages. For me, I've got a Gmail account set up. I've got Twitter. Uh, you've got your phone calls. You can look at each one of these individually, see what sort of phone calls you've had. It's rather well thought out for people who want to have one place where they can go and find all this sort of information. I think in that respect, it's better done than Microsoft's Windows Phone People Hub, which isn't as effective, doesn't give you the same sort of granularity that this does. Another element that Rimmer thought about quite carefully is the camera app. What they do, you'll find, is that if you take a picture by pressing the screen, you hear the tick, tick, tick there. What it's doing is actually taking a whole sequence of pictures and you can scrub back and forth through that burst of pictures. Each of them is about a millisecond apart, I'm told, and you can choose the particular one that suits you best. And when you choose that one, it'll keep it, discard the rest. It's a really good way if you're not sure that you're gonna be that good at capturing the moment with a single button press. It captures a whole burst of them. It does video as well, uh, and there's also video chats built in. There's a front camera for video chat over BBM. And uh, you've got to say that they've really thought, thought this through and they've uh, captured a rather useful thing here with the camera. There are some aspects about this swiping up, swiping down, which I thought were a little bit confusing at times. So for example, uh, I was in the music app, which uh, here has uh, the new Alicia Keys album. And what I noticed was that uh, I thought that I could swipe down and affect the, uh, the Wi-Fi setting, for example. But if you swipe down, all you get is a help button. In order to actually get back to that Wi-Fi setting, for example, what you have to do is go out of the app, back to the home screen, and then scroll down from there. And that's where your notifications will be available. Unlike the way in which, for example, on Android, you can go directly to any of those sorts of widgets from the notifications. I think this is uh, something that might get a little confusing at times for people. One element that's not shown on this phone because it isn't set up for it is that BlackBerry's come up with a way to separate the personal and the work experiences for the users of these phones. So if your company has a new version of the BlackBerry Enterprise server software, then it can set up these phones so they have a personal and a workspace. And with one swipe up from the middle of the screen, you'd be taken over to the other version. The content that's in the workspace can't be copied over into the personal space. And that is important for companies which value security of information. And that's the sort of people the RIM really needs to win back. 
So here's the question. Does RIM have a winner here? Does it have something which is going to stand alongside Apple and Samsung and the other big names in the mobile phone industry? Or is this going to be one of the sort of Me Too launches, a bit like Palm with the Palm Pre, where everyone thought that the interface was great, but they didn't actually buy it? The question is quite interesting because when you look at the way that the swipe works, when you look at the way the home screen's organized, when you look at the way that the People Hub is organized, it's all very coherent. They've really given thought to this. I think it's going to be hard for RIM to come back with consumers in developed countries such as Europe and the US because they've already got things like Android phones, iPhones, which in effect offer the same sort of grid of icons, big app choice. Uh, messaging that we're seeing here. The space that RIM really needs to work on is the corporate space. It's quite possible that this will be a success with some corporations, but as far as the consumer market goes, I think it's going to be an uphill struggle.